Hello? Okay. Yes. Protective equipment. So, is that where we're starting? Yeah. Come on, machine. Protective equipment. You yeah, have commercial equipment, all right, bought from a sporting goods. So, if you like to go to Dick's Sporting Goods, go to Academy. Commercial is going to be something that is just off the shelf. So anything that you can go in there and buy off the shelf, that's your commercial sporting goods. Now, do we got stuff on at, at the school that's commercial? We do? What? Do we have stuff at the school that's commercial sporting goods? No, not at all? You can't buy those baseball bats that they have here. You can't buy them right, you know, over it. Might be, but still, you can buy them and schools buy them. What about the shoes? Can you buy these same shoes our guys wear? They're pretty much commercial. They're not special, are they? Prophylactic equipment. <laughs> it's equipment designed to prevent injuries or to protect injuries from occurring. Can you buy this? Can it be commercial? Can prophylactic equipment also be commercial? Give me an example. Helmets. Yes, what are helmets made for? Protect your skull from skull fractures, right? So it's prophylactic equipment, but it also can be commercial. How about shoulder pads? Are they both? Shoulder pads both? All right. What about customized equipment? That's equipment that's designed for one individual's need. All right, so is that going to be commercial? You sure? How are you so sure? I try to be smart at work. For one person. If I'm going to open up a store and just... Okay, here's just for her and only her. Shoe sizes, only for her. As a matter of fact, they only have her orthotics in them. So if you wore them, one, they wouldn't fit, and two, they would hurt. So, you know, you're not going to buy those. How about can customized equipment also be prophylactic? Yes. You say yes? Give me an example. Knee brace. All right. Be more specific. Be more specific. You get a size for your knee. Yeah, they do that. They go and they'll take her over here, wake her up, take her to the doctor, and then they'll measure her knee six inches above, find out how big her her quad is. They'll measure it right at her patella. They'll measure that at her calf. And they'll take that off, put it in the computer, and the computer will make a knee brace just for that one. And that is also going to protect from injury. But it's customized. So prophylactic can be either. But commercial can't be custom, and custom can't be commercial. All right? But you can find commercial or prophylactic either in the store or it to be customized. All right, helmet. Where do we need helmet? Everywhere? Come on now. Do you really need them to ride a bike? Really? Seriously? I mean, when I was a kid, I bet even when that, I mean, even when Coach was a kid, did you ride a, did you ride a bike with a helmet? No, no, we didn't do that. We skateboard with a, with a helmet? No, we didn't do that. Oh, we didn't even do that. So, a helmet, football, baseball, hockey. Did you know that in hockey they used to never wear helmets? In ice hockey, that little black puck cruising along 70 miles an hour, hit you in the head. You was, boom, down for the count. Goalies used to never wear face masks in hockey. All right, so one of the first was uh, Jerry Cheater, and he played for uh, the Bruins. And whenever his hockey mask that looked like, you know, in that movie, Friday the 13th, was just that little white hockey mask, whenever a puck would glance off his mask, he would get little pieces of black tape and put like stitches on his on his mask, where he would have gotten stitches from that puck. Softball, 
they wear them, do they wear them at softball? Yeah. How about at track? Boom, exactly. Pole vault, you're up as much as 15 feet in the air, all right? So we had a guy that was down at pole vault just the other day. He went up. At this time of year, we have a north wind. What weight is our pole vault face? Boom, you got to run into the north wind. He got there, got in the air, and then the wind was blowing. And so instead of continuing forward, he stopped, and he got scared, and he held on to the pole. It's gonna, that's a bad thing. So if he falls and he's not on the mat, you're in trouble. All right, what about rodeo? Those cowboy hats they made out of helmets, does that count? No, no, it doesn't count. I was work. I used to work rodeo, and um, this one guy, first bull of the night, he got first jump. He's off. Second jump, the bull steps on his chest. Third jump, he steps on his chest and kicks him in the face. All right, and then he stepped on his head. No, he didn't. He's lucky. But rodeo. Not just not just in bull riding. Those hooves on those horses are pretty hard. I would also even say go so far as even in bulldogging or yeah, mutton busting, they have to wear them, huh? Yeah, and they're just little sheep. How about boxing? Do they wear headgear in boxing? Until they get to a certain level and then they decide, oh, what the heck, let's just beat the heck out of each other. Soccer. So there's your homework assignment. I want each of you to find me a soccer helmet. Okay? Find me a soccer helmet. And you can email, text it, etc. I need the URL. You know what URLs are, right? Your web address. So there's your homework assignment. Don't ignore it because it will be marked in your grade. All right, on the back of every helmet has NOCSE. And NOCSE is the National Operating Committee on standards of athletic equipment. What they do is they have developed certifications for baseball helmets, football helmets, softball helmets, all this different equipment, especially though with helmets. So they'll take this little fake head made out of plastic and they'll put it up so high and they'll drop it, bam, right on a piece of oak. And then they'll put a helmet on it and do the same thing again. So what they're doing is inside that little head is called a, a, a decelerator. It measures how much force is delivered to this head, this plastic head, without the helmet, and then with the helmet. And it all has to fit within to what they call a safe, safe range, or it doesn't get certified. So, appro uh, so approved helmets must protect against concussive forces that may injure the brain. But we know now that you can't protect against concussive forces, all right? Not entirely. So what helmet is there that can protect against concussion? Exactly, because there's so many different ways that concussion can happen. And what we know now is, is that a lot of times if you're moving and then you stop immediately. But what happens to the brain? It keeps moving. You're right. So if you're driving in a car, right, I want you to toss up a tennis ball. You don't necessarily have to do this. But if you toss the tennis ball up and whoever's driving, because you don't want to do this when you're driving, hits the brakes real hard, what happens to the tennis ball? Is it going to come down in your hand? No, it keeps going forward. It's got the... Uh, now it's already got the energy. So it's already got the motion to go forward, and we know something in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by another force, and that force is going to be, boom, the front or the back or the side of your brain or of your skull, and that's going to stop it whether you got a helmet on or not. It doesn't matter. Concussions usually occur from a collision from another player or the turf. How does it happen from the turf? How do you get concussion off of the turf? Huh? What do you do? Pick the turf up and slap you around? You fall? Huh? 
about it? How many, of you, how many of you go up for a catch, right? And you fall down and you hit right here on the back. Next thing it's coming down, it's going to be your back. And then your head goes, wham. And it wants to go farther, but the turf is there and it stopped it. Uh oh. The brain is still going inside the head. The head stops immediately. The brain says, hey, I just knocked myself up against the, the back side of my skull. All right? So, is it important that schools provide quality helmets? Is it important that schools provide quality helmets? Why? So you don't get concussions? You're going to get concussions. Yeah, it depends. There was this guy, now this is way before your time, it was 1982, and there was a football team that played in Houston. They had a team, all, there were teams all across the country. And what they were doing is they were trying to fight the NFL. You're the NFL? I'm going to start my own football league. Huh. And what I'm going to do it is I'm going to do it in the spring, and I'm going to go from February all the way to July. In your football, the NFL starts, you know, preseason starts in August. So I thought, hey, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, it really wasn't. People just didn't buy into it. But it, it stayed around for three years. All right? And so there was a team here in Houston called the Houston Gamblers. And this guy got hit, got hit in the head, and he went down for the count. Had a big-time concussion. And meanwhile, this other guy was there, and he was laughing. One of his teammates laughing like crazy. The trainer goes up and says, what is so funny? He is, he is seriously hurt. He goes, <laughs> I let the air out of his helmet this morning. <laughs> seriously. That guy got fined mega bucks, and the other dude, he, obviously, he had to wait until he got better. But even at that time, you know, it was, well, we just got to wait until you're 24 hours asymptomatic. We didn't let time go farther. And so it was your 24 hours, you can go to practice, all right, but you can't hit. It was close to what we do now, but not quite, all right? It wasn't near as involved. But I'm sure that he got to play again. So what do we do with our football helmets? We get done with football, what do we do with them? We hang them up. How long do they stay there? Huh? You know why we got white football helmets? Because the, the maroon ones weren't ready. All right? But what do we do after that season's done? We don't just hang them up. Wait until you see. Well, who cleans them? Coaches? Company. And what else do they do? Remember that drop test? They'll put them through that drop test again to make sure that the, that the padding in those helmets hasn't broken down. We said, well, not, not necessarily to that company, but there are companies. There's one in San Antonio. And they'll have somebody show up, with, a, with and then an 18-wheeler will show up, and they meet, say, okay. And then they'll bring in great big burlap sacks, and they'll put 10 helmets in a great big bag, throw one of them on them. And they'll do like 40 helmets a year. All right? And so for $25, you send those off. And for $35, now you can get new paint on it. For $45, you get new face mask on it. So it all depends upon what your budget is and how much you want to spend. But those helmets will go through knock stay approval, and you should do those annually. But what about that school that doesn't have a whole lot of money? Are they... Re huh? They can't... Re they, well, they can, they can they put it on a decelerator and find out what the, the forces are in that helmet? No, they don't have that. That costs even more than getting them approved. Because if it didn't cost more, right, then every school would have it instead of giving the money to somebody else. So, there's also an assumption of risk. Now, remember we talked about assumption of risk? You know, in the legal area, we talked about assumption of risk. Anybody riding a car today? All right, your car's getting wrecked, people die in cars. So you assume that risk as soon as you open that door and get in, that there's a possibility. It might be a wreck, and you might be in it, and you might be dead. You assume that risk. If people play football, you get hurt playing football. If people die playing football, yeah. So you have to have an assumption of risk. 
And that's on our physical form, and it's on the back of every helmet. Remember I brought that helmet in and showed you the stickers? Was it this class, right? Right? So you need to make sure that you have assumption of risk all over it. So what about if I break my neck? We talked about that too, right? You break your neck wearing a football helmet, is that, a, is that really a good lawsuit? No, but you know why they win? Because I didn't warn you. Okay, I didn't warn you that you could do this. And you're 17 years old, and you can't even vote. But I still need to warn you. And the parents need to be warned. So that's why it's on the paperwork. So here's what it says. It's right there in your little notes. It tells you exactly what the sticker says. No helmet can prevent all such injuries. This helmet, uh, use this helmet at your own risk. Look, you may suffer severe brain injury, including paralysis or death. All right? If that doesn't scare you from playing football, well, get out there and start hitting. All right, football helmet. When you fit in a football helmet, you need to wet the player's hair. Why? Excuse me? Wet. Yeah, when they sweat, their hair's wet. So you need to have it as close to what it's going to be like when they wear it. So wet their hair. I don't need you wetting their forehead, but you can wet their hair. All right? So two, you follow the manufacturer's guidelines. Now, a football helmet doesn't come with this that says, hey, this is how you, or even if it did, you really think that coaches are going to read it. All right? But you can go online and get educated about how to fit a football helmet. All right? Football helmets are not made to fit like baseball caps. They're not going to be nice and comfortable. They're going to be tight. All right? They actually might give you a headache for a week or two until they get broken into your head. That padding in there will push away a little bit, and you'll get used to it. Call the manufacturer to get a video and routinely check for fit. Every week at a certain time, whether it's Monday or whether it's Wednesday, Wednesday would be a great day. Check for check your helmet to see if they've loosened up. If there's been any air that's been pushed out, see if um, there's any air that needs to be put back in it to where it fits better. All right, and a change in altitude will change the fit of the helmet. Why is that? Now I talked about this with the class. Which class was it? Was it your class? They're already here. Drove up somewhere. You're lost. No. Huh? 